Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter and this is a simple battery plate I made that lets me use my camera batteries to power all of my video gear. That's right, cameras, monitors, transmitters, lights, and other gear are now compatible with a single battery and charging system. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can also make one or many of these plates and live a life with a single one battery to rule them all. Just bring a bag of these and you know all your stuff can be powered. Fortunately for us, most cameras batteries have the same voltage or similar voltage and capacity to a Sony MPF 550. So, you know, those batteries that can power just about anything in our kit. The only problem is the connections are different. So I can't simply take this battery and obviously put it on anything. I need to build an adapter. Now, if you're a Canon shooter and you use LPE6 batteries, you're in great luck. Somebody already makes one of these for you and you can go buy it in the description. But for the rest of us, Sony, Panasonic, Fuji, and other shooters, we're going to need to build one for ourselves. And don't worry, we'll cover more of the technical voltage stuff at the end of this video. But just know I was able to use one of these batteries to record 4K video on my Ninja 5 for over an hour. So definitely good enough when it comes to output and runtime. So that's the why and the how. Now let's get down to building one of these and talk about the parts needed. There are two plates we need to build one of these adapters. One for your camera battery and the other is going to be a plate that mimics an MPF battery. Aside from those two plates, you're going to need glue, wire strippers, a soldering iron, and a multimeter is recommended but not necessary. The one I used cost me 10 bucks and I'll link to all of this in the description. And don't worry if you're scared of soldering, I'll walk you through each step and it's really not as complicated as it might sound. So the first step is going to be finding that battery plate that is going to work with your camera batteries. Now you can go about this several different ways. The cheapest way to get this is on B&H. There you'll find $2 Watson battery plates designed for Watson chargers. Another option is to buy a cheap dual charger on Amazon like this one to get two plates. These have a nice rectangular shape instead of the curved $2 versions we talked about a second ago. Another awesome thing about this project is you don't have to use Sony batteries. You could use this with Canon batteries, Panasonic batteries. The main thing you want to look out for is the voltage, which we'll talk about at the end of this video, and you need to be able to physically adapt them. Next, we need the MPF battery side of the plate, which is what we're going to use to connect to monitors and other equipment. Now, there's two different ways to acquire this. The first is to buy a dummy battery, which is just a fake battery, and break it apart, cut it apart, whatever you got to do to get the MPF connections off of it. The other is to use an old dead MPF battery and very carefully cut off the connectors and reuse it for this project. I found a dummy battery online that is a larger, thicker version, and this was incredibly easy to modify. Since there's no batteries inside of this thing, I just slowly squeezed until it split right at the seam. Then then since this particular one had an extra DC jack on the side, it had some extra wire. So I was able to cut those away and get down to a single red or positive and a single black or negative wires and use this for the project. If you use an old battery, you'll have some more work to do. I checked the depth of my deepest monitor battery mount and marked my battery with tape, then carefully, and I mean carefully, ran the knife around the entire battery multiple times to slowly cut off the top of the battery. Cutting into batteries is dangerous, so don't use too much force here as you could cut through the plastic and into the actual battery cells, and that would be bad. After several cuts, I was able to gut the battery, including the cells and the PCB, until I had just the positive and negative pins. If you do this, make sure you recycle and dispose of the batteries in a safe and legal manner. Before we move on to wiring, you might want to check to make sure your adapter is going to work with whatever monitor or gear you have, because sometimes these monitors have a very deep battery connection and these adapters are a little wide on one side, so it might not fit. So if that is the case, you're going to need to create some kind of spacer with a piece of wood or plastic so that the battery adapter actually fits onto your gear. With our two halves ready, we can go ahead and start wiring things up. First, we need to make sure that the positive and negative connections are correctly wired on both sides of our adapter. The MPF side of our adapter is pretty simple. Follow the wire from the positive and negative terminals, and that is your positive and negative. The camera plate is a little more tricky as the pins don't always line up as you would think. I used a multimeter to check the positive and negative pins and found this to be the layout for the single plate, which has four connections on the back, and this to be the layout for the charger plate I mentioned from Amazon, which had three solderable pads on the back. At the end of this video, I'll talk about how to use a multimeter to do this for any plate. With that done, I stripped the wires down on the 
the NPF plate and tinned the ends of the wire and the pads on the camera plate. Tinning is simply heating up things that you want to connect and adding solder to them. With everything tinned, all you have to do is touch the wire to the pad heat them up with a soldering iron and you're done. Just make sure you have the correct connections made and it's always a good idea to go ahead and mark on the battery plate what is positive and what is negative so you don't get things backward in the heat of the moment. Now it's time to glue our two sides together. First, make sure they are in the correct orientation so that your battery is facing up on your gear. From there, I use super glue around the edges of the MPF plate and then hot glue with the cables and in the middle of the plates. Don't go too crazy with the hot glue as it can melt these plastic parts. With that done and cooled and dried, there was a small gap at the top of my adapter, so I used some more hot glue to seal it up, and bam. Now I have several adapters that I can use to power all of my gear with a single battery type. No more packing multiple battery types, multiple different chargers and cables, all I have to worry about is having a bag of these FZ100s and I know I'm good to go. So that's the project. Let's talk about results and cons. So I've been using these for over a week on a couple different shoots and had no issues whatsoever. That said, there is one con and that's going to be capacity. So my most taxing gear will eat one of these in about an hour, which is the same as an F550. But the nice thing about MPF batteries is you can get larger sizes like a 970 which I personally don't use because they're bulky and annoying, but at least you have that option if you needed it. Whereas with these batteries, you can't do that. You could, however, make another one of these adapters that has two slots for FC100s, and then you could have more runtime if you needed to. The second con is compatibility. I have not had any issues with these, but keep in mind that not all camera voltages are the same. So this FZ100 is 7.2 volts, which is a little lower than your typical MPF battery. Now this is completely fine because it's within the range that all of this gear uses, but that's not the case for all batteries. So if your battery is six volts, that's probably a bad idea and I would stick to 7.2 volts or higher. The other con is you could hurt yourself or break something if you don't do this right. If you cross your positive and negative, that's really bad. So if you do this project, that's on you. You've gotta make sure you do this correctly or you could run into some issues. But those things aside, I have absolutely loved switching over to these batteries. And that's gonna wrap up this video on this little project. This video is probably not gonna hit very many views at all. So for those of you who have stuck around, thank you so much. And if you wanna support videos like this, it would really mean a lot to you if you checked out our camera guides, our LUTs, or our used gear down in the description. I don't have sponsors for these videos, so you guys helping me out with those things keeps these videos sponsor free. So for those of you who have been supporting the channel, thank you guys so much. With that out of the way, I want to go over using a multimeter to make sure your battery plates work. So there's gonna be a short tutorial on continuity. If you pick up a multimeter like this one, or really any multimeter, this one is 10 bucks and it works great. There is a continuity setting on this dial and it has a symbol similar to this. If I take my multimeter and switch it over to that symbol and I have my pins in the correct positions on the multimeter, I can take my red and black probes, touch them together, and I'm going to get that annoying beeping sound. That is telling me that these two things are connected. And that's how we can find out where the positive and the negative are ending up on the back of those battery plates. So you take one probe, doesn't matter which one, stick it on the positive little pin, reach around to the back side of the battery plate, use the black or red pin, and connect to one of those pads until you hear a beep then you know that's my positive or that's my negative, and that's how you can figure out continuity, which is pretty slick. And that's gonna wrap up this video on this little project. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you in our next video.